Hi, this is Coach Brian from Nottingham Rockets Volleyball Club in Nottingham in England. Um, I'm just doing a video about the serve receive rotations, uh, the stacking that we can do to get the setter into position two, ready to set. Sometimes the positional faults as well that can occur. And I just want to point out this is for UK slash European audiences rather than the USA as the USA has the rule that the Libro can serve. We don't do that in, in the uh, in the European uh, area. We have a Libro as a backcourt player only uh, and no serving. So I just thought I'd point that out. A lot of the videos out there are from US coaches and halfway through what happens is the Libro starts to serve and everybody gets very confused. So this has been done uh, to help UK audiences. Uh, I just want to point out as well that uh, different teams have different strengths, different players. Some um, some players are very good at serve receiving and you may want to move things around. So what I'm putting into this video is the the basics and to show some of the options that are out there for teams. Uh, what I do with one of my teams might be different to what I do with an, another team that I look after. And uh, your coach may be doing something different entirely as well. You have to play to the strengths of the team. This is really just to give you a guide to make you understand or help you understand the rotational um, serve receive side of things. I'm going to put six people onto court and talk about the relationship at the point of serve and serve receive. You can't be out of positional rotation. If you are, it's a fault. And it's all to do with, with where the feet are. So just to highlight the backcourt middle player they have a relationship with the person in front of them so they can't be any further forward and vice versa the person in front of them can't be any further back uh, and then they have a relationship with the left hand side person the right hand side person if you look at this person in the corner here they have a relationship with the person in front and the one person to the right of them they don't have a relationship with the other three people on court though so that means we can when we rotate round, we can stack people up and make and uh, make it easier for people to serve receive and for the, the setter to go through. So if I just bring the front court player back on the left hand side to be part of the serve receive, we have to make sure that that person is no further back than the back court player, otherwise that'd be the fault. And if that happened, what you see is if his foot goes further forward, that's a positional fault. And the positional fault occurs at the point of serve. And the point of serve is not when the referee blows the whistle, and a lot of people think it is, and they start to move at that point, but then they get caught out. So their point of serve is when somebody physically hits the ball to serve. Um, and it's at that point that you can move from where you are. And if you're in the wrong position at that point, then the referee will blow for a foul. You lose, they get a point and they, they gain serve as well. So that's the front back relationship sorted out. And then the same would be for the backcourt player. So you, you just have to make sure that if two people are stacking like that, they, they're in the right position and they don't move too early. The same is true for left and right people. So again, if you're stacking up for people to move into new positions at the point of serve, and if you find that one of the feet goes over, uh, then that makes that a foul as well. And it can happen either side. So you just have to make sure that your feet are in the right position at the point of serve. So we're going to do some stacking just to show everything in perspective. What we've got now is the three front court players stacked up to the left hand side. The back court player here has a relationship with the front court player there. This back court player has a relationship with that person there. And this person has a relationship with that person there. As if this back court player here on the right hand side goes further forward into the attack zone, as long as they are still behind this player here, it doesn't matter whether they've gone further forward than these two people here. The only relationship that they have is with the person directly in front of them and the people to either side. So let's get moving. Let's put uh, six people onto court. And we tend to have a standard where the setter follows the middle, follows the outside, 
setter slash opposite follows the middle outside. Some teams will do that differently where they'll have the setter following the, the outside player. But traditionally, a lot of people now do setter following the middle, follow outside. And that's what we're going to use in the example for today. Uh, the first serve receive means that the first players that have to move across would be the outside and middle player on the front court. The outside player would want to run through to position four. So, so everybody's in the serve receive position and we're going to serve. I just want to stop the ball there. So you might see that all the players have turned to face where the ball is. This is one of my pet peeves that the front court players, middle and outside, just back off the net with their backs turn, their backs to the, the ball. They may, if you're lucky, look at the, the setter to see when they're going to set or where they're moving to to set, but they play no part of the serve-receive. And to me, that's wrong. We're not Olympians. We're not world champions. We can't guarantee the ball going from the serve-receive to the setter. So what the player should do is turn around, face the ball, make sure the ball is going to the setter, and then set themselves up to hit. Uh, if you're not a team player, you'll just back off, not even bother to look where the ball is and blame everybody else for when the ball hits you on the back of the head or just at your feet. Um, so be a team player, make sure you turn around. It doesn't take any longer or take any more energy than uh, just backing off. Just turn around, make sure the ball's got a good clean contact towards the setter, then turn around and set yourselves up to hit. Anyway, rant over. The ball uh, goes off and out again, unfortunately. So we set ourselves up for another serve receive. What we can also do is rather than just having the middle and the outside at position three ready to swap over, we could push the outside player over to four. That means they would be able to then take uh, any shorts that are over there. And the only person that really has to move is the middle player moving into three. And uh, another option for that as well is if we've got a backcourt weak player or somebody that's been picked on quite a lot and is struggling to do the serve receive now, we can move the outside player to, into the back as part of the serve receive and then move one of the backcourt players out like we have done there with the middle player. Uh, you might have to do that if you don't have a Libro or uh, the Libro is having a bad day as well. You could always at this point swap over the Libro with the middle. Not always the middle. I have one team where the middles are very good serve receivers and I wouldn't have any issues with them being a part of the serve receive. And one of the other teams that's more developing, uh, they need a little bit more help with their serve receive. So I, I will, probably would use Libro with that team. Just to go back to the bit where we talked earlier on about the, the stacking, um, middle player is taken out of the picture. The outside player on the front court comes back. As long as they stay in front of this uh, backcourt middle player here, sorry, the outside player in position six, um, then there's no, uh, there's no positional fault on there. You just have to make sure that that player doesn't creep back or that, creep, that player doesn't creep forward. As I said, one of the alternatives we've got is to change the middle with the Libro. And at that point, we can move everybody else around. We can either bring this front court outside player back into the front court and just cover shorts, or we can pull somebody else out of the back court and take them out of the picture as well. Serve. Middle player moves into the middle. Outside player realizes that the ball's not going to them, so they start moving across still facing where the ball is just in case it pings off in their direction libro passes the ball to the setter middle and front court middle and front court outside are moving into their positions and then we switch over after the ball has gone over the net not before so if you move too early on, on switching on the back court what you could find is there's a massive hole on the first touch coming over if i saw that i'd try and put the ball back over into that massive hole so please don't switch until you've got the ball over and they're going to be using two or three uh, touches at least. Uh, at that point, the opposite player comes over into position one. The Libro goes over into position five. The outside player is at position six. The outside player needs to stay deep because they do literally cover all the way across the back. It's about a metre to a metre and a half of a strip. And the idea is if the ball comes over uh, the Libro's head or the Libro touches it and goes behind, that the outside player or deep six player can go over to five or on the on the other side onto position one. So these are the base positions. Wing players should stay up near the attack line. Any tips or, or dumps into this area here, uh, as well as the middle, position zero, 
these two wing players have to stay up and cover that area. Don't let them drift back so they'll automatically perform just one single line there because the other team will pick on those areas. So we lost serve, we've won it, but we've lost it again. We're going to rotate round. So now the setter is on the back court, uh, which is a great opportunity for us now because we've got three front court hitters, whereas we only had two before. We need to get this setter through and then offer the three different hitting options. So we'll bring the outside player back to take over the setting position uh, for the serve receive, release the, the setter for the serve receive. There we go. And unfortunately, that ball went out. Now, if I was a server on the other side, this is a area, position one, uh, up front, where the setter and the, the outside player are. That's a position I'd serve into, because what you might find is the setter is running into position two and either gets in the way of the outside player or um, panics and then touches the first ball. Who at that point is going to take the second ball? Because the setter can't touch the ball a second time. So it can cause a little bit of confusion, maybe an error, and we could get a point off it. So if I was on the other side, I might be serving into this position to make it a little bit harder for that team. If that's happening, we can then push these two players up and bring the opposite player in four back to be able to cover that serve-receive position instead. Into base positions again. Unfortunately, the ball's gone out. We're going to presume that we've won a serve and then lost it again, and we're going to rotate round again. So now the setter is in deep six, which is not an ideal place for them to start on a serve receive. So we're going to bring that setter through uh, to the front, just behind the opposite player. And we're going to pull the other two players from the front court back as well. We can leave it like this if we want to. We can um, bring the, the position four player back to just have three um, or whatever option works for you. You can just, uh, the moment we've got four serve receivers there, two that are taking the long balls and two that are taking the short balls. But again, if there's a bit of confusion, you can always uh, push that middle player uh, down a little bit, bring this outside player back as long as they don't go behind the backcourt player. Uh, you can have th three serve receives. What you need to be wary of, though, is that the setter has come forward and that setter must stay in between the Libro and the outside player. If either the setter moves or shifts or one of these players does, it could put you out of rotational uh, position. Sorry, so serving receive position. And we just need to make sure that that setter stays in between the Libro and the outside. The other challenge as well, we've got uh, quite a few uh, moving parts at the moment. So the, the middle player, if the, whether they're serve receiving the ball uh, or, or not, they need to be able to get into three to hit. The opposite player needs to come through and take up the position where the middle player is at the moment so they can hit through two and then you need the setter to come into two. What I see with a lot of inexperienced teams is that the setter and the opposite just stay in uh, position three in the middle of the court. Uh, it make it easy for themselves if they move the opposite over a little bit further over, which will clear the space for the setter to come through. And then you've got a circle now, so the, the middle can come through to three, the setter can come through to two, and the opposite can come through uh, to position one to hit. Um, and there's, there's less confusion, you less like to, to run into each other or block the setter getting into position. Now we've got the middle player has come back to serve. That means the Libro's gone to the front court, which means we need to bring this middle player back on. The Libros can't be on the front court. Uh, the Libro can go off for one point or has to go off for at least one point before they can come back on. Um, so what normally happens is the middle player that's just come back to serve will serve until they lose the serve and then they'll come off at that point. It gives the Libro a little bit of a rest. Hopefully it's not just one point before they come back on. Unfortunately on this occasion it is. Everybody else is in the right position to be able to move. Unfortunately it's gone out. So at this point this allows us to change the Libro in the backcourt middle over again. Now the setter is in position five, probably the furthest uh, and the most difficult position to be to run into to be able to set. So we're going to do some stacking now, basic using the basic rules of um, positional faults and the relationship between different players. So we'll move the setter forward. 
So they're just behind the middle player. And we'll bring this outside player from the front court into the back to take up their position so there's no gap. And that's perfectly okay because they don't have a relationship with each other. We'll also move the setter slightly further forward. So now we have a setter that's still behind their front court player and still to the right hand side of their back court player. We also have this front court player here who is still in front of their back court player and to the right hand side of their front court player. So although these two people have actually swapped over, they are still within the, the rules of uh, rotation uh, and there's no foul. Setters on the front court now. Still got a bit of a distance to travel. And what we need to do is stack up the front court, move them across. And as long as this outside player here is still in, fr uh, in front of this opposite player, there's no foul on that occasion. And as long as we have the setter right in the corner and they stacked up, as you can see, sometimes the setter tries to be a bit cheeky. The referee blows the whistle and they'll start creeping forwards. It's not, again, I, I have to repeat it. The point of service is when the server physically hits the ball to serve the ball over the net. It's not when the referee blows the whistle. So if, a, if you've got a setter that has a tendency to start running at the point of whistle, if the referee's looking, they will see it and they'll call it as a foul. So we have to make sure that that's stacking up there. What we could also do is change a few things, is bring this outside player back into serve receive, move the opposite player back, uh, and then the any issues about the front and, front and back court player um, swapping over or transgressing um, is taken out of the picture. And we'll just rotate into the last serve receive position. This is the easiest one. Setters at position three. They they just need to move into two. And middle needs to move into three. Fortunately, it's gone out again. We go back into our positions. We've won the serve. We've lost it. So therefore, we're going to rotate around again when we've won. And we're back to the start where the middle player has just swapped over the Libro onto the front court. As I said to you at the beginning, um, each team is different. Each player is different. And what I've just shown you in this video may not apply to your team or the coach may have a slightly different way of wanting to do it. There's no right or wrong answer here. As long as you fo follow the rules about where you are at the point of service, then you can move your players around and make whatever works for you. I hope what I've, I've talked about today, though, explains why we stack and how we stack and what we're trying to achieve. Uh, and I hope you have a good game.